Yes, Kawhi. You roping doggies this morning? Yes, I am. I'm roping <laughs> chihuahuas. Hi, Dina. Hi. Good morning. You look so beautiful. It's so nice to see you. Thank you. It's so nice to see you. Red is definitely your color. Really? Yes. So Thank your color. Thank you. I love red. I do. It's magic. Sometimes yeah. I feel like I own too much red in my wardrobe, but no, I like thing. it. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, well, I had a quick question to ask you first, uh, based on last week's topic about the uh, autism. So uh -huh. um, I had a song that I woke up with in my head this morning that would not go away. Are you gonna? What is it? It was an old Sting song Ooh. from the '80s. Like, you know Ooh. what I mean? Which one? Oh, and you have one in your head this morning too. No, I know but you what's already the told one me. in your head? <laughs> Be still, my Ooh, beating know. heart. It's a beautiful song, but I was like, why can I not get? Where did that come from? And I dreamed about my friend Cindy giving me fake bacon. Does that mean anything? Oh, no, fake bacon is good because maybe she's watching the podcast. Bacon. Anyway, bacon. Anyway, whatever. Random thoughts. Whatever. Random, random thoughts. thoughts. Oh, we should do a podcast on that. On random thoughts? Oh, I got a lot of yeah. them. I bet I know, I know you do. Totally do. Mine are inappropriate, though. <laughs> Even better. Um, right. Yes. All right, y'all. So welcome back to Life in the New Normal podcast. I am Ashley Heydrich. This is our fabulous life coach, Dina Padawano. Thank you for being here, everyone. We love you. Today's episode is Finding Your Purpose in a Changing World. So yeah, I feel this one. I feel this one. Ooh. And I will tell you, I feel like my purpose has changed uh, probably 10 times in my <laughs> adult life. And uh -huh. over the last 10 years, it's changed the most drastically, right? Maybe, I don't know, since I started doing healing work and whatnot. But um, yeah, so went from being, you know, 10 years ago, I was an executive producer in a visual mm -hmm. effects company, or maybe I was already in live action production. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Either way, it was all about um, bringing the most money in for myself and for our directors and the company and uh, just the grind, the grind, the grind, the grind, and not giving yourself a break. Just that's all there was to it. And I mm -hmm. wanted to put good content out into the world, but I didn't really have any control over that. It's like our clients were our clients. Mm -hmm. So it was like whatever came in, be that pharmaceutical companies or whatever, you know, it was like, great, they're paying the bills. So obviously had a few changes since then. And uh, here I well, sit today is, is, in front of is, you <laughs> and all you well, fine no, people. <laughs> what I want to ask you, though, is... It, there's one thing that is your life's goals, right? Uh -huh, sure. Be to make money, yes, be I'm famous, not... be whatever. I'm nope. not saying, or to um, have your life's purpose. And I yes. think one can have a career and then separately have a life's purpose. I agree. Right? So and I don't think I, yeah, I don't think that's mine what were I've separate. Learned. I don't think mine were oh, separate. Oh, really? Well, I just, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wanted this thing, but I didn't know how to make it happen to where the purposeful content aligned with making the money. I was in the golden handcuffs, shall we say. You know? uh -huh. Yeah. And so let me ask you, when were you first aware of that? Like how soon into your job and your position were you aware that you weren't going in the direction that you thought you were going to be going into? Well, it happened a few different times because I started off in audio and music and thought I wanted to be mm -hmm. in music because I loved it. And then I realized that meant sitting in a dark room with gear by myself all yes. day. And I went, well, that's yes. not me. I want to be around people. I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. So I switched into producing and that was a lot more fun for me. It was a better fit and executive mm -hmm. producing. And um, But I was in advertising, you know, because that was where the money was back when I got into it. It's like working in television, psh, that didn't pay. You know, mm -hmm. working in music was going to be too hard and it was such a drug scene and that wasn't me. So I was like, all right, advertising, you know, and I still get to do fun little one-off projects with celebrities and big flashy things and go to Cannes every year and, you know, go on these fabulous sales trips. I mean, it really was Fun. I'm not uh -huh. knocking advertising. It afforded me a beautiful life, and I met some fantastic people. But, um, yeah, the projects were just kind of, I wasn't passionate about them. You know, it's like, who wants to get passionate about, you know, tampon commercials or whatever you're doing? I mean, 
you know, or pharmaceuticals. It, it was very uh, hard yes. to like maintain mm -hmm. that fake enthusiasm for that stuff. So, uh, I, I don't know. It was, it was well into it that I finally went, you know, I'm enjoying my life, but something's still kind of missing and doesn't feel, it didn't feel purpose driven. So I feel like things kept sort of falling apart from company to company when I, when I left and I started building my own companies and I was doing the same thing, but for myself, you know, it still wasn't lining up and I was like, huh, you know, something just still feels off. And it was, I think it was just the type of content that I was putting out there really. So how way. did you have the courage to leave? Uh, like, how does one have the courage to leave that lifestyle when you're in it and you're making? Uh. <laughs> I think it was sort of a forced exit because mm -hmm. COVID's pretty much shut us down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like everybody else out there, I had a lot of time to sit and think about things and think about what made me happy and got real used to being at home and comfortable and comfortable, started writing, started creating my own stuff. And God, just, it was so fun. And it made it so fun to wake up in the morning and step into my little home office and write and put a big whiteboard up on the wall and draw out, you know, different storylines and all these things. So <clears throat> it was just super fun. And it doesn't so, feel like work. So it feels it like you're, feel like it, yeah. It still doesn't mm -hmm. feel like work. Like, I love what we're doing so much, and I get excited to do it. Me you too. know what I mean? It's so exciting mm -hmm. and fun to talk to you and, un, you know, and just you. sift through these topics and the people that come on that we get to meet and the cooking mm -hmm. show, yes. you know, all of it's just... It just all well, lights me up differently. Right. Than and it's so healing there. because when we help people feed themselves and feed their soul, right, we're contributing yes. in our small little corner in the world. Right. And we're reaching the so. people that we can. And I think that that is so powerful. Right. Yeah, and I, I also so. think as we get older, what happens is, is we are less willing to put up with the minutia in work oh, and things, girl. especially if we're not <laughs> feeling happy or getting what it is that we need or getting out of it. And then some of us say, well, if I was at least getting paid more, well, no, because eventually even when you're getting paid more, you're like, it's not worth all of this money. Correct. And so everyone and will yeah. reach their level, right? Yeah. So, um, and I think can that's I ask where you a I question? hit. It's like I was, yeah. sorry, I, when I was nope. sitting in, in COVID and then the world started opening up and then there was the opportunity to go back into what I was doing, that's when I went, ooh, you know, something just yeah. didn't sit right within my gut. It was like the thought of going back to that rat race and those hours and the stress of the, was like, Blech. you know, can I, yeah. now if I ever were to have an opportunity, now is the time to try to figure it out and do it totally. differently, right? Sorry, totally. No, no. Uh, well, there's a few things because I'm going to piggy off of what you just said in the sense of now, thankfully to YouTube, social media and everything, mm -hmm. it cuts out the middleman mm -hmm. of somebody telling us if we're good enough, if we can yeah. get on the, you know, on the waves of the internet and stuff like that. So it allows you to, even if you're not looking at it as a career, to do it as a passion to contribute to the world or to right. edit or be playful and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. But I, I guess what I, I, I wanna ask you today, as opposed to like when we're growing up, right? I used to think my life's purpose was to be an actress, right? But that was a young person and that was more, um, now I'm learning that the purpose for me is something different than a career path, right? And mm -hmm. so some people don't always get the luxury. And what right. I find sure. with myself is that I think trying to pursue acting in the industry, as you know it very well, the thing that just because now that I know that I'm neurodivergent is I hated the competitive small talk and comparing against each other. So I was never, someone had an acting teacher once had told my dad, and I still remember this till this day. Yeah, she doesn't have the chutzpah like other girls that are super excited to get into it and really will do anything. And I was like, bitch, it's not that. It's just that I have no desire to compete the way you, they want you to compete. Right. So sure. um, am I going to go run out and go, pick me, pick me? Yeah, there was part of me, but then there was part of me that sat back and I 
I was always, I always knew I would have an opportunity. And then it's so interesting when you and I were doing this and you were going to pitch this as a show, I was just kept getting, keep talking, just start talking, uh -huh. just let's start talking. Cause I've waited my whole life for, for someone to tell me I was good enough to do the work that I'm doing and to be seen. Aww. And you were one of the first people that really Aww. wanted to invest in me yeah. in this situ in this, yeah. you know, partnership and everything. And it, it's so powerful because we're taking our power back yeah. in our purpose, right? Yeah. So if you feel like you have a life's purpose, if you have a phone with a camera and access to the internet, don't wait around, right? Yeah. Start filming that stuff. Start putting it out there. You'll start growing like we're growing. If you guys go back to the very first episodes to now episodes, oh. you'll see. <laughs> yes, do. But you'll see how we've grown and how we keep investing more yeah. in ourselves and keep investing in the people out there. And I feel like for me, my life's purpose, I've always felt like it's just touching people's lives, right? Totally. So people used to get so annoyed with me, especially during readings or whatever, that I would give people too much extra time. And I was like, but that's my gift and that is what I'm contributing. And so how can you put a time limit on people who are in dire need of right. help or connection and be like, oh, your time's up, right? right. And so... I feel like sometimes my life's purpose is to just individually touch one life and then hopefully that life will be effective and then they can touch other lives and it's like a domino effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so and even if it's just you. a thing, and even if it's just a smile or talking to anyone on the street or taking a moment out, you never know what people are going through. So for me, I, I, my, I feel like my life's purpose is to touch people. Yeah. right like literally just to touch and yeah. so um and you're very good at it thank you well, well it looks so different than what it used to right and so because i was told growing up or whatever if i was going to be able to touch people's lives it was a very long road right and so i believe that meaning acting or doing yeah. certain things or oh, trying yeah. to get your voice out there and trying to get in there and then it's like it, and then i was like that's just too much fucking work to be able so then that's when i started really connecting with people in my community or making sandwiches for homeless people or making bags or mm -hmm. just doing anything that you can, Yeah, you know, in these moments, I, I yes. just, it frustrates me that we've all been told or taught that um, it, it, our life's purpose is something we have to work for to get to. And it's like, well, why can't you be doing it along the way with the people that are surrounded by you? Not only that, but once you start doing it in any mm. direction, don't you feel that the momentum just builds in all mm. the rest of the areas in your life, too? I mean, I've found that. I'm like, so I can't much. just be this on this screen. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I have to be this, Ashley, when I walk out into the world, too, mm -hmm. and interact with people. And it's just wild, you know? It's, well, and vice versa. Learning, you know, you yeah, can start totally. it that way and then see how it you grow and it shows up here maybe i hope I don't well know. <laughs> i'm gonna share a very personal experience but i think a lot of people would resonate with this mm -hmm. so um back in the day when i was on tons of medications when i first started getting pain and, and i was on so many medications that i had i think i told you before on this podcast i had checked myself in to a detox place uh -huh. and i had met a bunch of people in um this detox place and it was like more of a mental facility which I didn't know that's what I was getting into but that's okay and um I met a lot of people there and there was this one guy that I met he was so cool and he was so funny and he was older and um I kept saying well we're gonna be friends after this because I'm that person right so cut to like three months later I see him and he's homeless on the third street promenade mm -hmm. right and I'm on a date mm -hmm. and I see him look at me eye to eye mm -hmm. and in that moment I knew I was like I bet he's thinking right now that I'm not going to say anything to him mm -hmm. and I'm going to ignore him. Mm -hmm. and, and in that moment, I knew it was so important. I go, hey, dude, I'm not going to say his name. I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? Mm -hmm. And the guy next to me, the, it was a first date, right? And the guy next to me was like, well, why is she talking to the homeless guy? Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Why are you out here? And we were talking, he's like, 
dude, I need a drink so bad. Do you got any money? So I asked the guy with me, I was like, do you got a 20? I'll pay you back. And he gave me a 20. I gave it to him and he bolted. And in that moment, I'll never forget his face uh-huh. when I acknowledged him and I saw him. It's just like you could see like the relief kind yeah. of come out of him. And I'll never forget that in the senses everyone has a, a, a downtime in their life, right? When the shit just hits the fan and luck is not on their side at the moment. But it doesn't mean we stop seeing them. It doesn't mean we stop connecting with them. It doesn't mean that I don't show up for you. That's what I'm learning about mm-hmm. who I want to be mm-hmm. is, you know, I don't care your status. I don't care about a bunch of things. I just care that you're okay. We're kind to each other and we have an exchange. I think that for so long, so many of us were taught that if somebody was of a certain class or a certain level, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, we don't we don't hang out with them or we don't talk to them. I had seen years ago on like a 60 minutes or something, a homeless guy saying, someone said, what's the hardest thing for you? And he said, people will not give me eye, eye contact. I mm-hmm. don't feel like I'm even human. Yeah. And I had always remembered that and I, I make a concerted effort and it's not like I pity them. It's just that I feel like it is so important to connect with people and make them feel seen. Yeah, that's, yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I get some people are like, it can be dangerous. It can be this. Come on. We're all smart. Right. We've all got a really good sense of in- intuition. I'm not doing it in a back alley on a street where there's no other people, right? right? There's always people around. I'm always making sure I'm safe, but I would rather assume the best first than the worst first. Right. And you know, it's like I'm in downtown Charleston, so it's it's a big old mixed bag of people walking around down here that I run into frequently, and it's the same thing, you know, but I always smile and say hello, even if somebody's clearly on a drug rant, <laughs> you know, or something. It's like, well... Hey, man, this is where they are in their journey. They're in one of those days. Yeah, but I... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've, they're I've happy though. That, they're, yeah. they're they're not. You know, they don't seem like they're out to hurt me. They're all smiling and, and they're chatty. They're surviving, and they're, <laughs> they're surviving, surviving, and they're doing whatever it is yeah. that the journey that they're on. And so, yeah. but it is hard Orange sometimes County, not to judge, sure. right? And you see that and go, hmm. You know, is it? Am I enabling this person? If I, you know, sometimes we feel like if we if we just sort of shut down that they'll learn something from that and I have to remember it's not my place to teach it's them. not your place to be their teacher yeah, exactly you know it's like it is your place to touch their lives and yeah. hopefully make them think yes and so that's important right that's a big distinction. and so if you, yeah and if you're consistent with them they're most likely going to be consistent with you yes and and um, did I tell you once on the show about the homeless guy when I was downtown, I used to work downtown L.A. at a restaurant and um, we would I would park in the parking lots and it was time where the homeless were really big down there. And when I would come back to my car at night, like the, the cardboard boxes would be piled up like in front of my car where I couldn't move. And I'm like, dude, move your condo. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, not cool. Aww. And I was friendly with them. Right. And so one move night I had condo. worked my ass off mm-hmm. and I had made like 320 bucks. It was the hardest I had ever worked, like waiting on tables and my back was killing me. And he came to walk me from the restaurant to the car. Like he always did. Oh. And, um, And homie pickpocketed me and he took all my money and I was so bummed. But then, you know what I learned from that? I was like, I hope he goes and gets the BJ of a lifetime and really enjoys himself because there's nothing I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Confront him. What are you going to do? He's going to be there all the time. I'm just going to be smarter. Right. right? And all my cash was in a wad in my purse. It's very tempting. And I'm not justifying it, but what am I going to do now? Never talk to him again and never be kind to Um, him again. Or he was uh, always there. That was his house. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But there would be those conversations we've had where I'd feel like maybe I would say there are those that don't deserve access to you if they treat you that way too. Yeah. And that was 20 years ago. And then I was just doing the best I can with what I knew then. Exactly. Right? No, I'm not judging what you did then. No, no, I'm no. Saying, I'm you know, saying but for now, people in I don't general. think I would continue to just smile and no. nod through it. Unfortunately, no, I would do something it's like different. You give now. people now, a chance, but yeah. Oh well, and now I wouldn't even carry that much cash with me ever. Well, that would be. I don't. Who carries yes. cash anymore? Nobody. And yeah. so, because I do get asked a lot, is, and I'm is, like, I have zero cash. I did have one the other day say, "Well, I have Venmo," and I was like, "Dude." 
<laughs> that's funny. It is funny. That's super funny. I mean, come on, but that's resourceful. I'm like, good for you. Yeah, you know what? They all have phones. Um, it's amazing. I mean, anyway, it sorry. Is what it is, right? So, no, it's okay. But I, I feel like it's like I don't. I've been thinking so much about this, about life's purpose and whatever. And I'm thinking about a lot of people going, well, what if we weren't born into a family and we don't right. have the luxury of even thinking of our life's purpose? Or what if it's constant abuse or somebody who's in a violent relationship or whatever it is? Your life's purpose is to save yourself, protect yourself, heal yourself, find strength in yourself. So I think we all kind of start out with that. And then we all make choices from there and how we grew Absolutely. up and our experiences we've had. Right. So yeah. I think the life's purpose was always the same is learn as much as you can heal, be happy, have balance, like all of this, but life distracts us. Things get in the way addictions happen. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with me medically, instead of looking at things in a negative way, I feel like because I have, you know, nieces and nephews or people that I know there isn't anything pretty much on the stuff that I've been through that I couldn't save people a lot of time or a lot of doctor's visits. I really try to use my experiences to show other people other options or what they do have. Um, lots of people in, that I talk to get so afraid if pain starts in their body that the pain is not going to go away. And I feel like I'm a pretty good coach about like, I've been through this. I've been through that. I can promise you this. I can, you know, help you with that. And I think that that also is part of my life's purpose is if I, I went you, through it, I agree. thank you. But if I went through it yeah. and I can prevent my nieces and nephews from having to go through it or mm -hmm, other people mm -hmm, from having mm -hmm. to go through it, then let's turn this negative totally. into a positive. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. And so I can't be bitter about it because it's already happened. There's nothing yep. I can do about it. Do I feel that it sucks? Yes. But um, there's two ways I can go. I have a choice. Am I going to be bitter, frustrated and mad? Or am I going to use it as a lesson and a tool? Now, mind you, I'm in therapy for 27 years. And but I've always ha kind of had this disposition. And so being in therapy has helped encourage this disposition. Right. And so uh, for me, my default used to always be um find the negative first and bitch and complain about it. And now my right. default always is find the positive and get something out of it. Yeah. And I love that. And yeah. you know, have you seen, and this is not an endorsement because I've only seen the first episode, but have you seen the documentary on Arnold Schwarzenegger on Netflix? No, not yet. It's oh, pretty it incredible. Yet? Talk I'm about so someone excited. who tuned into their life purpose really early, regardless of what you feel about him. It is yeah. a powerful thing to witness how dedicated he was and how he held that vision and got out of his little tiny hometown in uh -huh. rural Austria, you know, I mean, uh -huh. it was just like, it's very inspiring actually, you know, and it's I, very I, I, could, inspiring. I don't have any feelings about him one way or the other, but it's an inspiring story. So anyway, well, isn't it cool though, to see people who sort of know from a very yeah. young age that they're yes. getting out. So for me, I knew the day after high school graduation, I was out. Tell oh, me I where that too. came from. I, I had no too. idea. From, at 14, and I was like, I want to live in New York or Los Angeles, and yeah. I want to experience more and yeah. do something different. But uh -huh. had I had the easiest childhood, I mean, I had a good childhood. I'm not going to say I didn't, but it, there were some things. But if uh -huh. those things hadn't existed to push me, Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wouldn't have had that desire as much to explore those other areas. So it's like, and same for you. It's like we, mm -hmm. you get to a point in life where you actually become grateful for that stuff because you're like, it was all part of the plan, I feel like, to help launch me into something else. Totally. So do you ever feel like there was a part of your life's purpose, but then something got in the way and then yes. you had to figure out something else to do? <laughs> Well, it's funny you should bring that up, Dina. I must um, be thinking. I know. But uh, <laughs> yesterday I was reading something on Instagram about mm -hmm. the pathway of a normal, uh, or, uh, normal, what is normal? There's no such thing. But like someone who has healed their childhood trauma and how they, in a healthy way, progress. And they say that it happens at age 25. 
<laughs> like if you recognize in those years where, you know, you went through this stuff in your teen years or whatever, and that was part of your launch pad, like kids get it mm-hmm. earlier these days, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, that by the time you're 25, you should have worked through that stuff and now be, and I was like, okay, so what I had a 25 year <laughs> diversion. <laughs> I'm like, what you talk about, Willis? At like, least 20. There's no way. 20 year, yes. 20 year diversion, you know, of uh-huh, like, too. la, 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 drinking, drinking, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> that girls, would be girls. Called, yes. Distraction. Money. Diversion. All of yes. it. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of what I feel like what happened was. <laughs> well, <laughs> and do you feel like a life's purpose always has to be something that is to the good of others? Do you feel like the life's purpose could no, just be something uh, that well, feeds I think, you? I think it could be inspiring to others. I don't think a life's purpose should be something that negatively affects others. Or I guess it could no, be. No, I meant but... positively or negatively. So it's like, look, I'm gonna, uh, my life's purpose is to go be a doctor. I'm going to go heal people. Yeah, now right. that is about you and also other people. Right. But do you feel like there are people who are like, want to be selfish? And then they're like, I don't yeah. care who I hurt on the way up. I'm just going to, I'm honing in on my life's purpose. And that's what matters for me. And that's what I'm getting done. Yes. But I feel like those people are coming from an unhealed place. Yes. You know, and I, I feel had like a lot they grew of trouble up in with trauma. That. I think they grew up in trauma and they just don't recognize the cycle they're in. And they're probably repeating what they've been fed. Mm-hmm. Or likely. I also think it's like this. Some people go, oh, you're not cut out for that business. You're not cut out. It's not that I'm not cut out. I'm just not willing to play that game. Right. I'm just not exactly. willing to get in on the con. I'm not right. willing to, you know, pull the wool over everyone's yeah. eyes and just take for us. Like, I've never been a person who there is no fucking way that you're going to catch me on a yacht. And then there's going to be a bunch of people down here who have no food or anything without mm-hmm. me coming back down and sharing right. my food. With right. Them. Right. Right. But there right. are a lot of people who have no problem doing that. Right. Right. And I don't know if that is that a life's purpose or is that a life's ego or is that like so it's like finding your purpose can be so um tricky in the sense of you know growing up it's like money things whatever that's important power is important but is that Mm -hmm. your purpose right right Right? it may be your goal like you said earlier today and maybe in their minds it is their purpose you know to build mm -hmm. this massive corporation and to and, and they may be coming actually from um, just a place inside where they're like fearful of not having enough. You know, I, I, I'm worried that I have scarcity to make mentality. enough scarcity yes. mentality. I have to make enough to take care of myself for the rest of my life and my children's life and my wife's life or whatever it may mm-hmm. be. I mean, we've all kind of been there and had those thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. So see, my whole excitement is, is like, if I were to be super motivated like that, I'd be like, how many jobs can I create? How many people can I help? How many, you know, like I really just like admire people who are yeah. just so giving and out in the world. Cause it's not like I'm not one of those people. It's just that physically I can't do that kind of work. That's why I offer it mentally. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I think my life's purpose has changed so many times depending on where I'm at in my life. Same. Right. Yeah. And so I think that other people should know that just because you had one purpose when you were younger and then another one when you got older and then another one and then another, you're allowed to keep evolving oh, yeah. and changing and for it to be different. Right. And so yes. how do I've you find careers out probably 10 times? <laughs> right. And how do you find out what what is your life's purpose like for you? Do you meditate? Do you talk to God, your guides? Do you pray? Do you, or is it something that you feel a direction pulling? All that. Okay. All of that. That's pretty powerful. Totally. And I've felt that pull since I was very young. Like Mm -hmm. I said, from like 13 or 14, I've felt this pull to get out and do something that was a combination of uh, helping people and even when I was sitting at church in church when I was young you know I'd think one day I'm gonna have to talk to people and explain some of this stuff you know (laughs) this isn't like that's very cool yeah I felt that and then this was before I even knew what being gay was you know this was before Uh I knew that all that was coming on but I also felt like I was gonna have to be okay with traveling and being somewhere else and being you know in in a Uh different community of sorts so 
I don't know. I can't it's explain interesting. that. When, can't explain it. When I was a kid, I knew that I was not going to be around my family and not and it wasn't because of anything negative i just mm -hmm. they used to call me in my house the holiday district because i would avoid every holiday and it was now that i know it's the neurodivergence but it was just too much of all of us in one room with all mm -hmm. of my siblings and too much intensity mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and um but i knew from afar there were things like girls who were getting bullied in school used to come to me and then I would handle the situation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was always like protecting girls or, um, I had a girl a couple months ago say, dude, I remember in Newport, this guy called me fat and you slapped him across the face. And I was like, I did. Oh my God. Good for me. Like, and then, so it's like, I've always felt like a protector and me I've too. Always felt always. like I, just always wanted to protect the underdog and I've always spoke yeah. out very loud and I also think that's part of a purpose yeah I mean I, I'm the oldest sister so I, I you know I sort of got that ingrained in me at an early age too of feeling protective but then when I got out into the working world I was the one that would always walk the women producers to their cars late at night or whatever you know just I don't know mm -hmm. I always felt like but that's so kind yeah. and that's amazing. But see, yeah. there's a difference when we feel things and then sometimes we suffocate that feeling and we don't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, we don't cultivate and nurture that part of us. Right? right. And I think for people listening, people may have the urge to want to do things, but then that the chatter in our head of like, it's dangerous. No, don't. You don't have the money. Are you crazy? Blah, blah. And I just encourage people to just try it once or twice, you know, because yeah. really showing up for people in the world can be addicting in the sense Agreed. is that it's it's very nice when you go places and you feel like you're building your community around you. Yeah. Just by showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that's what true. I mean? And I so do. I think that that's really cool. I do. I do. And like, like you said, your cool. purpose can evolve, you know, I mean, totally. just because you're in one profession or you know if it has nothing to do with your profession it might not you might be paying the bills but then your passion and your purpose is over here good for you if you can figure yes. that out I mean but I think that getting in tune with your purpose like how would you what advice would you give people Dina to get in tune with their purpose if they're unclear of, of how to do that well it's not it's simple and it's not simple in the sense is learning to listen to i'm not i've just learned also that not everyone has an inner dialogue in their head but i do and um there are certain things that one could see or listen to or so i'll never forget in 2008 when mm -hmm. i first came to italy I, I had met this lady on the bus and she was american and she was much older she was probably like 75 and she's like i moved here and i never looked back and when i got off the bus i saw her going down the um the street right and i was like god that's a really cool thing how brave how amazing then i had broken up with my ex and then we got together years later but that lady had such an impact on me of i felt like i needed to take the opportunity because if i didn't my bus was leaving right and so like i will then look into signs or things people say or things that I hear that maybe other people don't or things. If you find yourself thinking of something over and over again, ask yourself, why does this keep, you know, coming up for me? Or why does this keep, you know, um, it's not haunting, but in the sense of like um, I, things that people say to me, sometimes mm -hmm. certain things will stick with me. Like one of my friend's kids, her friend said, I am, yeah, I'm going to take off and I want to live in Europe for a couple of years and I want that experience. And then I was like, shit, did I miss that opportunity when I broke up with my ex? And mm -hmm. then things kept, it kept coming back, mm -hmm. right? And all of these feelings had kept coming of like, oh, you're not staying here. You're meant to go there. You were just mm -hmm. chicken the first time around. Mm -hmm. and then we got back together two years later and then I wound up coming here. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because I almost missed that opportunity out of my own fear. Right. Right. I, I, I told myself so many times, like, no way. How are you going to do it? And it was all the things everyone said to me. What about your rent control apartment? What about this? What about that? Yeah. What if it doesn't work? What if it, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so for two years, I allowed that to keep me still. 
But don't and you so, find that the universe, energy, whatever you want to call it, keeps presenting these little tidbits for you to pay attention to once you start where, recognizing? Yes. People will say things or it'll come up and you're like, why is this showing up for me again? I, I think I need to pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. And it'll resonate. It's not that it just shows up and you have zero feeling about it. Like it'll yes. light you up, you know, it'll be like. Oh, okay. And it could be from someone you don't even know who knows nothing about you, but for some reason they were placed in that moment, in that time yes. to light something up. Those in are you. the coolest instances. The aren't they? coolest. Those things. are the ones where I just sit there and smile to myself, you know, and I'm like, oh, that was pretty cool, y'all. Right. <laughs> and so it's just so cool to start learning that we are in control right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That we get to decide how we feel inside of us that, and then I can already hear yes. other people going, yeah, but yeah, but, and I get that you will mm -hmm. get to a place, especially if you keep watching this podcast, mm -hmm. you will get to a place where that won't be as important to you anymore. The yeah, but hey, what, what are people man. thinking or yeah, but what it's yeah. like getting up and living your life for yourself. I've been really trying to figure this out lately and just allow me this space is like, Okay, so we were born, right? And then we have to live our lives, right? But then if we have people in our lives, we share our lives with those people. But at the end of the day, we still have to grab our own life mask. We still have to brush our own teeth. So really, the experience is really all, not all about you, but it is about you first, right? What you're experiencing, how you're showing up, where you're going next. When I was a kid, it was like, you're do what you're told. You're not supposed to think this way. You're not supposed to think that way. You're not supposed to talk that way. You're supposed to dress this way. You're not supposed to be fat. You're not. And so I didn't have any of my, it's not that I didn't have any of my own thoughts, but with the neurodivergence, my own thoughts would hyper fixate onto the negative. And then I would, the narrative would be, oh, I'm not supposed to be that. Or, Me oh my too. God, not until I'm skinny, my life isn't going to happen or not until this and not until that. And then it's like, wait a minute what the fuck? Like, like, this is a lot. And none of that is my own voice. Even that gaslighting myself isn't my own voice. That is a voice that was created out of survival to keep going with people that I was around who, you know, or a community, or that's just the way it was. And once you start getting into the thing of going, but is it that way for who? Because mm -hmm. once they've told you this and they say that you have to behave like this or be like this or whatever, okay, they go home, you go home. Now what? Who are you there with? Yourself. Right. I mean, so, I, I go real deep with this stuff too. And I know you and I off, off uh -huh. camera, we have a lot of these deep conversations yes. and it's like, I'll I sit and them. think, I know I do too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I'll sit and think sometimes, okay, so before I came into this world, you know, there, there are beliefs that we get to think about the purpose of coming into this life and that we chose to come in and just hang with me a minute, y'all. So yeah. let's say that before I came into this world, I was like, okay, my purpose, I want to be able to help people and I want a big life. I want to be able to travel and I want to be able to touch people all over the world. Well, you know, and let's say that um, you know, I want a strong sense of community. And if I'm going to need to travel around the world so much and do this thing and, and keep myself free in a sense, it'd be really nice to have a strong, like family home base or something. And then I look at what I have, you know, when I look backwards and I'm like, oh my God, I wouldn't have left home if certain things hadn't happened. I wouldn't, you know, look at the beautiful family support system that I have underneath me to launch me forward now, but they don't cling too tightly. And that's a good thing, you know? Yes. And then, you know, the whole being gay thing, it's like, you know, that kept me sort of moving forward. And in and, and, and one sense, all of these combined components have kept me from locking down too soon. And, and maybe I could have had a family and done all that and done all this too. I'm sure I could have, but this has mm -hmm. been my path and I'm just grateful for it is all I'm saying. Like you go through these things and at the time you're in them, you think, man, this, this sucks. You know, totally. this doesn't make any sense. But without mm -mm. that contrast, you don't have anything to push against and show you what you do want and make you mm -hmm. fight for it in a way. Not fight, but, you know, strongly well, lean into it. And we are so blessed that we were able to, because I look at certain people that I know that were around me in my childhood or whatever, and they weren't as lucky to have the same willpower, strength, courage to leave or to start something or, mm -hmm. and I'm not still saying they're sitting in the same situation, but yeah, yeah, different group of people, same circumstances. 
Yep. Right. And so, but then there are people who have great childhoods and then do go out to help people because they do appreciate how blessed they were. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of people in the world. And I think that what we're learning is our difference is what makes us special. Yes. And we kept being told that we had to be like everybody else in order to fit in and be special. Exactly. Right. And so I remember when I was a kid, I was singing like, um, Tarzan, the monkey man. And then there was like, like a dirty ending or something too in front of like, we had people over and you shocking. Yeah, I know. And then the, <laughs> the lady goes, we don't, we don't say those kinds of words in our house. And I just remember going in my head, I was like, well, we do in mine, but uh -huh. I didn't. I was like, and I, I felt a little humiliated right. and really like, and things like that really stuck with me, which was like, um, because my parents were the crazy family, right? So there wasn't a lot of, there was more of, it was about how good you looked and how thin you were. Right. But there was not a lot of like, you need to behave like this because we were all crazy and it was fun. And um, and big so- personalities. My, big personalities. And so my mom and my dad especially, I mean, the more the merrier in the house, anyone could come over. So I learned from a very young age as, messed up as my parents were they, they were the most giving and we had the least mm -hmm. so yeah. um and i learned that that just because you have little doesn't mean that you still can't share some of that little if somebody else doesn't that's right lovely. and i think that that is one of the more yeah. beautiful qualities we have in my family yeah and i also think that my mom didn't have a great childhood and i think my mom's purpose really was just to survive mm -hmm. and to make these beautiful children so that mm -hmm. they can go on and have their mm -hmm. own beautiful children. But I mean, uh, some people, their purpose here on this life is to just survive because they've never been given a leg up or sometimes life doesn't let them get their head above water for too long. And it is a constant struggle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not meaning to minimize any of that, but sometimes it is okay if you are just surviving. Right. because a lot of people haven't survived what you're surviving right right and then and a each lot of us of are the only people. ones who can who can know what we feel exactly. our purpose is you know the question is are, are you listening to your purpose mm -hmm. are you following that well right. and i like you in a sense is okay so it, let's say if you're in the same situation and you're with a group of kids who are all getting abused there could be some mm -hmm. of them who turn out and get go and they become very promiscuous there can be some that get bitter and angry yep. there can be some that become very protective yep. there can be, i became all of it right so yeah. i it was like uh, i it was like oh i want to see what that feels like i want to mm -hmm. see what that feels like i want to see what that feels like okay i'm good i'm done but i've uh, it was, it was that was lot. your 20 year and, diversion yeah, right ooh, girl <laughs> and um but what experience what, what the yeah and the the experience of it all is yeah in hindsight it's very easy to go oh i wouldn't have it any other way but do i think i could have been this kind wonderful amazing person without all of that Yes, because I was that kid even as a kid before it all started, right? But do I think that that helped me want to reach a broader um, group of people and things because I want to help people prevent certain pains or certain things? Absolutely. Right. So I think that I'm not going to miss the opportunity of, hey, I have life experience in that. Hey, I have a little bit of intuition. Hey, maybe I can help you. Hey, maybe I can give you some of my time. Hey, and I just do it one person at a time, right? Yep. And then now, now with the podcast, for now, we'll, <laughs> we'll get millions. Yeah. But um, I think um, everyone needs to know it's okay, whatever your life's purpose is, as long as it's feeding your soul and your heart and who you want to be and where you want to go next. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's pretty powerful stuff. It's, it's pretty powerful to, to look at, to be able to look at other perspectives of why people are the way they are. Right. So as Absolutely. you get older, instead of being judgy McJudgerson, you could be like, God, you know what, but I heard that she was going through a really hard time with whatever. And maybe this is her doing her best in whatever situation. Exactly. And I've noticed that that shifts me right away. Yes. And we're all here in this human experience, right? For mm -hmm. whatever we came in for. And it is interesting when you think about that as like um, AI and virtual reality keeps growing more and more and more. And yeah, people yeah. are paying big money to sit in virtual reality so they can 
create their own world and have these experiences. And I'm just sitting here thinking, well, isn't that what we've already done by just coming into these bodies? Well, right. But we were never <laughs> taught that. So in a virtual reality, you're given the gift and you're given the, the, the controller. Exactly. Right? But, so but then you hello. Can... I'm just saying. You just nailed it on the head so perfectly in such a way. But that literally is what people need to learn. And right. that is literally what we were taught completely opposite of. Exactly. You were given the controller when you no. were a kid. Yeah. And let's don't and, even start yeah. with like what we learned, you know, in like the churches and that sort of thing and how we're supposed to behave and be the, the good girl, the good boy, you know, mm-hmm. and, and behave a certain way and not pursue your passions, put them over here, service everyone else first. And I'm saying to you, if you can find your purpose and tie it to how it can then help other people too. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. That's so rewarding. Such a beautiful thing. And it's have you ever thought to about do both? It's so possible. And I get this feeling that, okay, I feel like the internet is like this information highway. And like people who are sitting on the outside are like so afraid to try to jump on like the moving escalator or the moving thing that's too fast because it's like, yeah, but, but once you're in it and you get the hang of it, you're like, wait. I have access to so many people all over the world and not just here. So Wait cool. a minute. So if I can keep up and I can, you know, and so yeah. if you could get over that fear and you could get, you could build a community and who cares if it's online or whatever, yeah. you're getting access to people, places, and things that you, you would have never had access to before. Oh my God, before. agreed. I've learned and so, so that much. Is, from right? people all over the and, world that I've taken the time to like go down the little rabbit hole and research and, Look into what they're doing. Horseback excursions all over the planet. Ah, um, amazing. You know, there's just so much information out there. And there's so many people have such in, interesting stories. And everybody's got one. Everybody mm-hmm. here has gone through what they've gone through to get to where they are. And it's just, you know, that's why movies are so fun. Because it's somebody's story or something somebody created. But, you know, documentaries and all that stuff. It's just all fascinating. But everybody's got one. You know, well, and you can be looking on the Internet and you could be seeing something and somebody could inspire you um, light, bright, like just open up a mm-hmm. light in you. And you're just like, whoa, wait. And at, like, it's like, oh, I saw like the homeless guy that I saw on the TV. Mm-hmm. Right. You never know where you're going to meet that person, when that person's going to affect your life, how that's going to affect your life. So I just think it's so cool watching so many light workers and like vigilantes out there sticking up for people and it's not just people in their own town it's Mm -hmm. like we're coming together globally going you're not treating us like this anymore you can't talk to her like that you can't i'm going to be his big brother from the internet the big sister from the internet like i just think that yes there's many bad things on the internet but there's also very cool things with growing community and um and then sharing life purposes with other people I just love watching people who've wanted to have farms with alpacas and things and like creating such cool um, content for other people to just consume, right? And I I just think it's, it makes me happy. And so (laughs) um, yesterday I was listening to a podcast where the guy said, every time you go on the internet, you should contribute. So you shouldn't just be a consumer. You should also be a creator. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We got a podcast. We got daily bit. And then I was like, see, but it's like this mutual sort of give and take. Exchange. Yeah. 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 And it's it's not just taking it's it. And yes, there are, I, I, there are spectators that just are afraid to get their foot wet yet. And there will be people who will be fine. But I think that that's also helping us find our life's purpose is by seeing the way other people live and going, wait, I didn't know that was an option. I didn't know that was not, wait, what do you mean you get to do that? Or you don't have to do that. And then it's like, we would have never known that. Yeah. Yep. You know? And so I just think it's so, yeah. Yeah. It's super cool to watch. It's just so cool to watch people. I just think it's so cool to watch people live out their live streams as well, especially when they give back. Agreed. Agreed. You know, so our subtle change and profound impact for this week would be. Our subtle change of around impact would be um, when you find out what you think your life's purpose is in this moment, do one little thing every day that contributes to getting you one step closer to it. I love that. Right? So it's yes. just very subtle. It's not a lot of pressure. It's just like, oh, well, that 
that was easy. Maybe I could do a little bit more. Maybe I could do a little bit more. And you know what I mean? And yeah. it, it just gets momentum. Yeah, agreed. And I Thank think that you, that's Coach really Tina. powerful. Yeah, it's so great. And Yay. I want to let y'all know while we're here that um, a, a couple people have written in about getting the free readings with Coach Dina. So we've got a couple episodes coming down the pipe for y'all that are going to be very special very special mm, thank you um, for that i'm excited yeah i'm excited for that too actually i think those are going to be really touching episodes so something to look forward to and um a reminder that life in the new normal cooking show has moved to thursdays and this week's recipe is mexican stuffed potato skins and they are oh. so good so, so delicious good. we did sweet potatoes um they're freaking delicious too and mm -hmm. Another opportunity for y'all to see a different side of Dina and I being ridiculous. Well, me being ridiculous. Yay. You're always like composed. In my and, own world. No, your, I'm in my queen, own world. Tiara. And then I laugh. I laugh <laughs> because you're like, it's a mess. It's this. I'm like, all my ADHD friends are going to understand my chaos. So funny. It's so funny. I know. Yeah. We the, couldn't be more opposite. More but opposite. Genius. And and it's all true. Like, it's all I legit, y'all. Like, I just, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Welcome anyway, to my brain. Yeah, we thank you so much for being here, as always. And please, y'all, help us get this word out there. Like, share, subscribe. It means so much when you do that. It helps it us so much. So it really thank you, does. thank you, thank you for y'all who are here. We appreciate you so much. Yay! And um, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Ciao for now. Join us here each week as we unpack life in the new normal with a new hashtag subtle change profound impact from Coach Dina. To get a little daily inspirational message in your social feed, follow us on YouTube Shorts, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Copyright 2020 Angel Baby Films, all rights reserved. For entertainment purposes only.